All right, how y'all doing? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Marlon Wise, co-owner and CEO of World Envision. And if you enjoyed that last video, you are gonna enjoy this one even more, all right? We continue to give jewels and gems in this podcast. I appreciate Corey, Nehemiah, and Tori for even coming, sit down with us, and even being able to drop these gems and sharing it on our podcast. So, all right, without further ado, let's get straight back into that video. I had some because uh, a lot of people are, um, trying to figure out some people may be doing pop-up shops some people may be just trying to get their first location and uh we preach a lot getting a kiosk and i know tori i know uh you started your kiosk so like if somebody's looking to start their first location would you recommend getting a store or would you recommend getting a kiosk and um and if and vice versa uh why all right so never had a physical store like um knowing what i know now i would that would be my next step for me. Like I would try to get a store and go through that process. But speaking on the pros and cons of a kiosk, I would say um, the pros is you in a space where people are looking to shop. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to, I mean, we all done. We sold stuff out of, out of the cars and everywhere, but it's like we popping on somebody who they already moving on their day. Like they doing whatever they're doing. So you in the mall, you at a kiosk, you like one step closer to somebody willing to shop. So I'll say that's definitely a pro. Um, and you just, for me, it taught me a lot too. So I feel like the kiosk, definitely somebody who more like introverted to yourself is like, the kiosk is really like boot camp in a way. It's like, it's gonna teach you sales, gonna teach you people skills, gonna teach you, like you say, mm -hmm. gonna have a whole bunch of no's. And how and important is those sales skills though at a kiosk and in general, when in general your brand. If you know sales, you'll never like not be able to make money. Like right. if you learn how to sell anything, like, if we all got clothing brands here, but like if we had to go to a whole nother industry, we'll know how to mm -hmm. get it going just off of the sales alone. Mm -hmm. So the kiosk is like being in the mall, and I'm sure everybody been to somebody try to stop you in the kiosk. Oh, come <laughs> check out this, and you like, nah. Let me clean your sneakers. <laughs> right, let me clean your sneakers. <laughs> exactly. You ain't have to do them, like, man. No. The about it, they been, like, they've been in the mall for years, and they still there. It's like so like, they making money. They gotta like, be. Like, gotta be. Yeah, they gotta, gotta be. be. Gotta, gotta be. be. Gotta so, be. Gotta be. It's like they make money from me every time I go, bro. That's a fact. They give me every time I talk I, I cash out, I cash out. I might not pay for the product, but I'll be like, huh, ten dollars, bro. Yeah. For cleaning my product shoes. is good though. Product is good. I actually, I really bought it for real, for real, a couple of weeks ago. Never used it. Bro. <laughs> you I never just, used they it. They be though. like, man, support my business. I'll be like, I got you, bro. For I'm sure. gonna support you. Mm -hmm. bro, and then uh, I'll say just like on the the cons at the time. Like now that like you know like. Problem solving skills and just figuring out like the reason I left is just because I man at the time I think it was nineteen maybe twenty, but I was just like man I got two locations now. Um, at the time to really figure out the systems on how to hire people, I was just somebody walked the key. I was like oh I need a job. Okay, let me try you out or friends, family like just trying different people out. But like knowing what I know now, I was just like got. Um, systems like Indeed and like looking what the, the big companies do. Like you in a kiosk in the middle of the mall with the stores around you who they got a process on how they hire people and vet people mm -hmm. and all those different things. So that was a kind of the time. But now it's like, if I had to go back in the mall today and have a kiosk starting there, I would do things a whole lot different. Definitely, like I said, the Indeed process, interviewing people, um, just really seeing how do retail companies do that. And then but also finding like what they do that's missing. So it's like, um, I know at the time when I was in Perimeter, they had, uh, I was across from Zoomies. So I was seeing Zoomies had, at the time, they had pretty high price stuff, like for, like compared to what I was doing. So just going off of their sales and like, when these people come out, they already spent money over there. How can I get them to spend money here too? And just like literally just figuring out that way. I understand. Mm -hmm. Nah, that's big, that's big gems right there, bro. And I like what you were saying just about like, if you learn how to do sales, you'll be able to do that in any yeah, other any business that you create or any other business that you join. So I do got a question for everybody, uh, just as far as like, what have like building like a clothing, like a like a brand just in general have done for you as an entrepreneur in general? Like what what has yeah. that pre made you, have that made you think bigger? Mm -hmm. Like, do you think that you could go start another company today and, and run it all the way up easily? Do you think you could join something and blow it up? Like how, how did you just start? And I don't know if this is all your first businesses or not, but for me it's like, I think so much bigger and I could build so many more companies with just the knowledge that I gained. So like, what have that done in y'all life? It's, re it's really just the frameworks because like, you know, touching on what he said, if you know how to do certain, you know, there's, there's certain strategies that, you know, that if you know how to uh, execute, 
th- that um, if there's certain strategies that if you know how to execute, they apply to all industries. So, um, you know, having like an, an actual successful, profitable uh, brand, you can use those same strategies and apply them to, you know, anything else that you want to do in life. So that's probably like the biggest takeaway, I would say. Um, from you know running running our brand and being able to scale it is just like you have those same systems those same strategies that you can use you know and whatever you want to do going in the future and like you say you can build other companies or further scale your current brand because there's no need to reinvent the wheel all these strategies and everything are already um, Mm -hmm. available and other companies are doing them in the open market so so would you say so would you say it was more it's not more about like somebody teaching you how to have a better Shopify store, but you think is it more about you transitioning your your own thoughts and your own way that you think about how to build a business? That was the most important thing than you learning like how to like find the best manufacturer. You get what I'm saying? Is, w- w- would you say that the mi- your mindset change? Yeah, what? definitely, definitely your mindset changes because like. Once you get that first sale, like that first Shopify mm-hmm. ding, it's like almost like a drug to where it's like, it's and everybody knows <laughs> everybody. If you ever sold anything on Shopify, <laughs> it's like it's like a drug. You like how do how do I get more of those ding ding? Like you know what I mean? It's <laughs> like sure it's literally like a drug. So like you're off, doing, yeah, that's all yeah, yeah. I, I mean I don't have you turn it, it off. Yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. nah it, eventually it gets to a point where it's like annoying once you do a certain yeah. amount of sales. But <laughs> like when you first starting off, or like if you whatever if you've been on eBay. Like I started on eBay. That's wow. how I first started like getting sales. But that first like mm-hmm. ding notification or whatever where you see uh this PayPal has processed for $30 or whatever, mm-hmm. like it's literally like a drug where you're like, how do I get more of this? Like what systems do I need to put in place to further scale it and better optimize what I'm doing and make things more efficient? Like what he said, like, oh, first I was just like hiring, you know, hiring like random people like that I didn't really know or Mm -hmm. vet. But then now I know like you can go through Indeed and you get references and you do interviews and you do second interviews Mm -hmm. and it just makes things more efficient. And once you build out those processes and strategies, then you just get a person to do that. You don't have to do anything. (laughs) So, but a lot of people, a lot of people put this content information out and make it seem like anybody can do it, but it all comes down to, you know, you just no need to reinvent the, the wheel and you just got to put in the work and you got to go through those trials and tribulations and, you know, do that testing and figure out where you messed up and how you can better optimize it. Mm. And, 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 that, were you, and were you saying uh, from like a, a personal standpoint, is that like running a brand, how has it like made, who has it turned you into or also? It, it's, more, it's more like what, what you basically just answered. So you said, basically what you, what you said at the end was like, you when you fail at something, you got to go back and you got to learn why you fail. So it was like this quote that I heard. It was like, uh, and I hope I hope I get this right, but it's like, I'd rather be, I'd rather be, I'd rather know why I failed than be ignorant of how I succeeded. Because if you succeed at something and you don't know why you were successful you'll never be able to duplicate that process mm-hmm. so but if you learn why you fail you'll be able to go back and you'll be able to go tweak a couple of things to basically be successful at it every single time so that that's basically basically what i what i what i was asking was like it's more about you becoming a better entrepreneur mm-hmm. than me trying to tell you hey go download the shopify app yeah like yeah it may make you a couple more dollars but it's not necessarily going be why your business be the next multi-billion dollar business. Because really anybody can, you. anybody could, you know, download sh- or sign up for Shopify. It's like, what are you going to do with it? Mm-hmm. Like, are you, do you know what apps you need to put into your store? Do you know like what, how to like write the product descriptions? Do you know how to take good photos? Mm-hmm. It's like, if you don't know how to do those, you know, simple tasks, I mean, they're, you know, it's, it's simple because that information is all online. There's people that make videos, how to take good pictures, how to write good copyright description, how to do upsells and add like different shop. If you don't know how to do those things, then you're never going to be successful just because you have Shopify. Like, that's not going to do anything. So mm-hmm. I think a lot of people kind of take, you know, like those kind of things where it's just like, oh, get just get Shopify or, oh, you know, download the SMS thing where you can blast out SMS. Well, if you don't know how to segment out your, your audiences and, you, you know, retarget people, if you're just blasting out messages to people who <laughs> don't even purchase or open the met, like you just wait. So, yeah, it's just just how knowing how to do things and setting up systems and processes. So that's yeah, kind of like and, and I was I was just going to add, like, uh, what type of advice do we have for the people that's 
um, saying like, you know, I have an online. I'm trying to be worldwide. You know, like they literally, they're literally waiting for it to create some piece of content that goes viral that's just gonna bring in a mm-hmm. bunch of sales. Like, and I feel like they're ignoring the local part of growing a brand. What type yes, of advice are. do you have to that person? I would say, man, don't wait for people to come to you. You go get your people. My favorite kind of marketing is grassroots marketing. So I'm cool with going viral on social. That's fine. I'm cool with influencers, big audiences, but like. There is a reason why I still work my own booths every single time. It's because I like interacting with the people. I like seeing mm-hmm. their and hearing their feedback. I like seeing them getting the product and like, yes, I finally got this. I like hearing them say, hey, I wish I would do this better. Hey, I love when y'all do this. Hey, can y'all bring this back? You're getting real time information from people who actually care. They took the time to see you, come out here and see you. So their their opinion is very valuable. I'm not worried about people who are not here. I'm worried about the people who are here. And once you serve who's in front of you first, then it's going to allow you to reach the masses. And so many people just want to reach the masses. And people don't know you. They haven't seen you. So I'm at Essence Fest. Mm-hmm. I'm at uh, all the homecomings. I'm at uh, the Celebration Bowl. Anywhere where my audience may be, I'm going to be there just in case because there's somebody who will support me or see me for the first time. I still go to homecomings and I'm like, oh, what's this? And I'm like, dang, you don't know about me yet? Okay, cool. Let me, <laughs> let me put you on real quick. And that tells me that there's always Billions a new audience out there. The there's world. so yeah, many people in the world, no, bro. Yeah. So you will never run out of people to talk to. I need to do more problems in LA because there's not a big, there's no HBCUs out there. So that's a good market for me to touch. I need to be in New York. I need to be in these places where maybe we're not as prevalent because people need to know. And then once they know, here's our social. This is the second channel. First is in person, but the second one is social. And then we just continue to build from there. I think building on that, it's really like you can kind of more so control that, you would yes. say, because going global, you know, like trying to go viral. I mean, yeah, there's sometimes our formulas, but at the end of the day, yeah. you're just posting it and you're just hoping that, oh, this is going to get <laughs> yeah. them. Like you can't rely on going viral. Like, yeah, there's some people that like they kind of know like the algorithms and mm-hmm. they do. They know all this stuff. The quantum physics are doing all this. <laughs> and that. But it's like dude, you can't control going viral. It's facts, really just facts. it's really just based on if Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever social platform you're using is going to mess with you on that day. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's exactly. really all it is like. So I feel like, you know, doing boost to the ground marketing, like mm-hmm. actually showing up in person, you can control those interactions so and those right. engagements with your customers. And you mm-hmm. can tell them like, hey, like you could tell them, hey, follow me right now. Like, Max. yeah, it's going to take a while to like, but shoot, if you just on the ground, like, hey, follow my brand, follow like you can control somebody like mm-hmm. following your brand. But like, you know, even if you go viral, you get millions of views. It's like mm-hmm. that might not contribute to you getting more followers or more sales sales or whatever you're you're trying to do on you know so i think it's just a more controllable like you can control those factors Mm -hmm. uh you You know being more boosted around yeah it was two things i want to say one just going back to the last question just about um what i learned about by having a clothing brand is um just so much more that's a part of this industry besides just clothing you know we talk about that all the time Mm -hmm. where it's like a lot of people want to be the artist, but it's like you talk about you got managers, you got the producers, you got Man. the whole team around it. And even what you were saying about what we do on the clothing side, say you're not good at taking for taking photos. Like it's photographers out there. It's mm-hmm. people who do copyright in this. Yeah. So it's like you might be big into fashion, but you may not like clothing like clothing brand is not the only thing you have to do Yo. in this industry. And you could still like be you can still be an entrepreneur with those things. You can have your own photography company. You can have your own copyright copyrighted company. company. Yeah, so right. you can still be an entrepreneur in this space without being like I, for the me, boss I, yeah, of without, a brand. Right, yeah, a brand. Cause it's like, everybody always want to be the boss, but yeah. it's like you could be a boss of a different sector. And to be honest, yeah. it's like it's it's big of a bag, if not bigger, in those in those fields. Like mm-hmm. I mean, I got a screen printing company. It's like to be honest, I made more bread off of that than some of the brands that I've done. So it's like, it's so many other spaces around this. And it's like, when you talk about it's a vertical integration, it's just like on the supply chain. It's like, you're doing a brand. Even if you got your own brand already, it's like, all right, how can you be a screen printer? How can you be the blank company? How can you like just get in like further and further down the supply chain versus just only being the brand? Mm-hmm. I think that's a good point too, because it's like, you look at Nike, it's like, yeah, you see Nike, they selling billions of dollars of product, but what do you think about, how much money do you think those factories make? Oh my God. They making crazy, but you don't even know what their name, but they making, 
I'm sure they're making billions, if not well, hundreds of millions crazy. of dollars. Yeah. And I so that. the fact that Nike not getting the stuff made for free, like somebody, they <laughs> somebody had to that. pay for it. Mm -hmm. So I hope you're getting a lot of value out of watching this video. All right. I want to help you continue to scale and grow your brand. So I need you right now to go join our free Facebook group for all clothing brand owners. You must apply to get in, but I want you to hit that link in the description right now to apply. Let's get it. It's, it's uh, more yeah. branding. We on we yeah. on the level of branding, mm -hmm. so we not necessarily we on the top of the surface. Like and you yeah. gotta keep going down, but we in the more influential side of the mm -hmm. of Correct. the sector that we in. So mm -hmm. the thing that's the benefit of growing the brand is like you able to partner that brand up with other brands and benefit from them. So like it may not be a t shirt that you selling at every event. Like like support black college do an amazing job at this. Like you may do things. Like you said, uh, for uh, what it was, All Star Weekend, mm -hmm. you know, you may not be selling the actual t shirt, but you're able to put your brand out there. And, and that's why, like, we all, that's why we really be teaching people when you build a brand, it's more about mm -hmm. something they gotta support. Like, right. it have to be a reason why they support it. Like, it's not just, oh, my shirt, $20. Like, if that's why you making, building like a clothing brand to like just say that my shirt, $20, <laughs> like, it don't make sense because. It's gonna always just be a clothing. It's never gonna get to the point where it's just a brand. Well, right. you could stamp support Black College on some Beats headphones, and that'll be a collab. Oh, so you, get yeah. a, you, you get what I'm saying? Like you could do like 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 what you're saying. We ball could also be media too. Like it ain't mm -hmm. just it ain't just clothing. Like you taking it to the media space too. You get what I'm saying? So it's like it's way more bigger things. Um, that you could do, but you can't just be focused on the fact of you like- You wanna box yourself in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you but also I mean, talk that's about that like... from a, a, a smaller brand part of you too, because smaller brands may be trying to do too much at one time. Yeah. So, I mean, in our level, we you know we wanna produce content, we wanna put ourselves out there, but I feel like we when we first started off, it was all about doing a couple of things for first. first it was going out there in the community. Yeah. Whether it was going and hang out with the up the up high uh, kids where we would play basketball, give food to, whether that was trying to connect with the school and the universe. Because even uh, we could attest to that sometimes we would try to do too much outside of even our brand that yeah. we would become overwhelmed mm -hmm. um, with stuff. Yeah, no, nah, we I've been there many times, and I think that sometimes. We're focusing on everything but the systems that's going to get us out of having to do the everyday work. Spreading yourself too thin. Exactly. And I think it comes a lot with self-realization. I've been doing this. I've been doing this self-realization journey for a little while, like really understanding who I am and what role I play. Um, I think both of y'all kind of attested to this. Everybody's not meant to be a CEO, right? And so like I always tell people in a perfect world, I wouldn't be the CEO of Support by Colleges. I would be the CMO. I want to handle the marketing, the branding and the partnerships. I don't want to hire people. I don't want to fire people. I don't want to know what's going on in the warehouse. I don't want to know none of that. Just <laughs> let me market. Let me get influence. Let me do partnerships because that's what I love to do. Now I have to do everything else because I haven't found anybody to replace me yet. But your whole goal after you figure out why you're doing it, what you're doing and develop that brand is to be able to remove yourself from the everyday of the business. Exactly. And like I, I would love for somebody to come by support by colleges for 500 million and then hire me as a CMO. I do that for the rest of my life. Just chilling and, and making sure the brand stays how it's supposed to be in the beginning. Yeah, hey, I need I need ten percent of that because somebody might watch this video <laughs> really? and come. If they come and drop five million, you can get ten percent. Y'all heard that? Y'all heard that? Ten percent. Hey, right. Hey, and, then, and then this is what I'm doing. I'm 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 I'm, I'm taking this money. We're gonna donate five percent to some of the businesses that's watching this podcast. Hey, All right. Right. hey man, All I'm right. putting I'm putting the title on this video. Um, selling support black. Corey talks about selling support black college for five hundred million. <laughs> Valuation. Everybody got to be watching this way. <laughs> Give me a call, please. I'm ready. Nathan John, where you at? Hey, let's get <laughs> And I know uh, we kind of coming down to the why we gave you guys so many, so many gems, so many level tips. Real. But uh, before we leave, like, what's that? What's that one piece of advice that you'll give somebody that's just getting their brand started, or just, or have their brand started, and you know they may be struggling, or maybe just getting a few sales a day, and they really looking for some type of motivation or advice to get them to ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, making a million dollars a year. Because we got brands that sitting here that's operating on million dollars a year, and that's where a lot of these people want to be at. So, what advice do you have for them? I would say uh, two things. One, celebrate your small wins. A lot of people like you have a five sale day or a ten sales in a day. And you'd be looking at like, dang, I want more, not realizing that you never hit 10 sales before. So celebrate those small wins because every day is not going to be the best day. Mm -hmm. So when you have the opportunity to celebrate, do that. You drop a new collection, celebrate it. Even if it didn't do what you wanted to do, 
you had an idea, you conceptualized it, you brought it to life. That's an accomplishment because 95% of businesses fail because they never start. Nobody ever does it. And everybody's trying to be perfect, but they're not trying to be present. And I always tell people, just be present. Just, just show up. So I would say celebrate your small wins. And I would say double down on the things that's working for your business. So if you find that pop-ups are doing really well for you, keep doing pop-ups. Don't do one and be like, all right, let me just do online. Like, nah, keep doubling down on that while simultaneously working on that because it doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be both. So I would definitely say those two things, man. Big Celebrate gems. small wins and double down on things that's working for you. Big gems. I would say just uh, just continue to like build your team. So if, if you're a single owner operator or like you have a couple people, just continue to build your team because I feel like if you're the smartest person in the room, you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Like you need to be always like just just be retaining and just accumulating more information and more knowledge. So yeah, that's kind of my my biggest thing. Just like always, you know, really touching on what he said. Like he doesn't want to be a CEO because that's maybe not him kind of broadcasting a brand or like doing those CEO. Um, duties like always having me the main point of uh, communication that's probably not his strong suit like that's not or something he doesn't really want to do mm -hmm. and he feels <laughs> like there's other people who are better than that better that could do that job better than him so it's like if you feel like you're just going to be the best at everything and like you're you know you could be the CMO the CEO the CFO like you're doing something wrong because mm -hmm. once you get to the scale of business that like you know some of us are doing or all of us really in this room are doing like you have to have a team that can help you put those systems in place to uh you know just keep building and being more efficient yep you know what you got to her yeah i'll say for me it's uh, i think a lot of people who are watching this might um still have nine to fives and still have jobs and a lot of people talk about oh i hate my job don't work for nobody but uh, you asked a question earlier where you were saying um for your you asked a question on like um, a time when you thought you may quit, like doing your brand. And for me, it's the opposite. It wasn't that I hated my job. It was like, yo, I love it so much. And like my personality, I was like, yo, cool. I'll be number two and just run this thing up where I ain't got to do one mission or nothing else. Like I'll, yeah. I'll just do that. And um, so people talk about the negative side of having a job. I say even whatever side you're on, if you hate, you hate your job or you a person like me where it's like, I love my job. It's like continues to build your brand the whole time because even if you had a job for 40, 50 years, it's like, and some of you love, there's a lot of people who actually love their jobs in the world, but it's like, you still have your thing that you could pass down to your family and next generation. And then also it's like, things can be at a super high and things can crash. And it's like, what you left with. So it's like continuously to, no matter if you wish I'd join a nine to five, you love your job or hate your, hate your job. It's like continuously to build that thing. Yep. What about you, Nick? Um, first, I'm going to say it's kind of hard to come with something after they didn't came with all, all, all these gems because I could relate and agree with everything that they said. But I, I would say uh, really for my beginner level people that's not really seeing as many sales every day, like you really got to keep going. Like I, I like I, I love what you said about celebrating like your small wins mm -hmm. because we'd be too busy trying to reach a hundred million dollars and, and we don't even <laughs> be noticing that hey we just made our first thousand or hey i just made my first even twenty dollars like you know what i mean i just sold my first shirt like so go pop a bottle to that because that's what's gonna motivate you and keep you going so like everybody that's really watching this, watching this video um for one you gotta believe in yourself because ain't nobody gonna believe in you if you don't believe in yourself and you definitely don't want nobody to see something in you before you see some before you actually see something in yourself because then you're gonna get yourself in a sticky one but ultimately you definitely got to believe in yourself and then number two you got to believe in your product because this is not an easy game it's definitely tough it's definitely com it, i'm not gonna say it's competitive because i don't even want to say that because if you just stand if you stand out and create a product that's super unique that nobody mm -hmm. else actually don't really have like like what I was talking to you earlier, like your brand, you have an athletic brand. Like it's most people that start street and street well. You get what I mean? Don't even think about athletic brands and they don't really have that many out there. So you could definitely still come up with creative things and stand out from the from the competition and you could excel and grow quick, right? So everybody that's watching this video, make sure you just believe in yourself and believe in your product and you definitely could be in the same position. But if not, I really want somebody to be watching this video to build a brand that's even bigger than all our brands that's right here. So don't be like us, be better than us. Um, yeah. That's really what I got to say. I like that. And I'll just finish it off with, uh, re you know, reinvesting in your actual business. Like a lot of people see where our business is at, but like 
we reinvested in our business for years. I mean, mm -hmm. where we was only getting paid five hundred dollars, seven hundred fifty dollars after we did the business six eight years, you know, mm -hmm. and. Um, a lot of people, when they see a little bit of success, let's say you have your, your first 10K month in your brand, you are already ready to, uh, you know, reward, maybe over reward yourself. Mm -hmm. And when I'm, and what I would say reward yourself with is, yeah, you can go pop a bottle, but reward yourself with, um, investing in your brand. Like, so like for us, like when we'll get money and we'll go get new equipment that made us happy because we was upgrading our business. So we may not have been investing in our own physical appearance, but we was investing in now all this high quality stuff that they see. And they think that it's a, a business that we paying tens and 20 thousands of dollars to do this, but everything that we producing is in-house. You know what I mean? But nobody yeah. didn't see when we was investing the money that we was making into actually elevating our, our equipment, our team, you know, everything that we really have around. And then last but not least, you know, everybody get knowledge. They, you watching this podcast right now because you're seeking knowledge and we appreciate you for, uh, you know, joining in. But it's all about applied knowledge. Like you didn't watch this whole video now and what stuck out? What are you going to execute on? So many people get information, but they do nothing with it. It's not going to, you know, if you don't like your job, the information that we just gave you should motivate you even much, to, even more to go and put it into actual right. and apply it. Because obviously, you know, we sitting up here and we able to tell you that the things that we did, the things that we didn't do, the things that we failed at, what we would have done differently. And you have an opportunity right now because you have a fresh brand. So with our brands, we have to change and transition and we and we basically got to do a whole one 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 what, what that is 180 mm -hmm. but when you have a fresh brand you can literally learn from all of our mistakes and you mm -hmm. could apply that to what you got you instantly become better than us all right so, so I want, how much would y'all value this information that we just gave out right here? man listen you can't even put a price on this so how much, how much they they y'all basically getting thought can't even priceless information. So you definitely got to go act on it, all right? You definitely got to take action immediately. What else they got to do? They got to make sure they like, subscribe to our channel, run us up, baby. Hey, appreciate that. T-shirt giveaway. Hey, be, be ready for the next T-shirt giveaway because it's going to be special, special, special. We're going to be releasing that real soon. We just want to say thank you, Atlanta. Thank you, all my guys that came in and gave that knowledge. Hey, the Activate Your Vision podcast where we're giving the juice and tips that it take to build million dollar brands, all right? I'm Marlon Watts. I'm the co-owner and CEO. Hey, I'm Nicholas Clark, co-owner and designer. Hey, and, and we, we out, out, baby. <laughs> <laughs>